For our next demo, we've got a database on premise here at Sroder and Sons. We're doing sensors for all the animals when they're walking around the farm. Maybe that database grows a ton and then it does shrink, but it keeps growing and it's very unpredictable size. So what we want to do is instead of having that application talk to the sensor database on premises, move that database to Windows Azure SQL, get rid of the on-premise one and do nothing but change the connection string to instead talk to the one in the cloud. Let's go ahead and build that. So in this example, I'm going to be building an, or using an ASP.NET application that switches from a local to a cloud database. The cloud database can be used by others and also scale to fit my data needs. I'm using a, using a shared database because I need the real-time consistency, but the elasticity is hard for me to get on-premise. I'm starting off here in SQL Server looking at a local database table. This animal sensor data contains information, longitude and latitude, about where some animals are around the farm. So very simple stuff in this example, just showing a simple record that has an entry ID, an animal ID, which farm they're in, what their latitude and longitude are, and what the timestamp is. If I switch to Visual Studio, I can see the app that's using this. This app, here in the sensor view data, simply reads this data from a database and puts it on the screen. Nothing special. So by simply running this, we can see that indeed it is able to connect to the database. And that works. This is the very bizarrely named how are they moving application because it's for a farm and I have to make it somewhat interesting for you. So this reads the data from my local database. You can confirm this by looking in the web.config and seeing the data source is local. Well, what I want to do next is provision a cloud in Windows Azure SQL database, turn off this on-premise database, and only point to the cloud. Here in the Windows Azure portal, I'm looking at SQL databases and I don't currently have one. So I'll walk through the wizard to create a brand new one. I'll call this Pluralsight DB Cloud. I can choose an addition. What's the maximum size? You can see there's going to be some limits here, especially for the web version, a subscription, which server to put it on, and so forth. If I'm creating a new server, I can define some credentials and complete the wizard. Now within just a matter of moments, I end up with an actually fully functional SQL Server database in the cloud. And it's all of a sudden already online within just a matter of moments. So what I'm going to want to be able to do though, is I'm going to want to be able to connect to this. So the first thing I can do is set up the Windows Azure firewall rules to this address so that my local SQL management studio is allowed to connect. It's showing that my current IP isn't in the firewall rules, so I'll go ahead and add it. And that means my local machine should be able to connect successfully. I can also then see the connection information for how I can connect. Here's the server or service I should connect to back in, in the SQL Management Studio. Here in the SQL Management Studio, I'll go ahead and shrink the one I have already, and let's connect to another database engine. This one's not my local machine. Instead, it's going to be the one in Windows Azure. I can switch, and I'll be using the credentials that I defined there. Sure enough, it does connect, and at the limited rights, this is going to be the full admin I have locally. And I don't think I'll see any databases here besides the one I just created, Pluralsight DB Cloud. There's no tables here, so I'm going to want to run the script that can create the table I have in my local database into the cloud. In this case, I want to generate a script for the table. I'm going to script that table to a create in a new window. So I want to install the same one now in the cloud. I want to run this against Pluralsight DB Cloud and install this table. And the script doesn't work exactly the same as we need to turn off some of the additional things that only work locally. I'll execute that again. And it went ahead and created my database table. If I refresh this, I should see it. Sure enough, my cloud database now has the animal sensor data. We'll add a new row via code. I'll create a simple insert script so I can run that against that database table. And sure enough, that created it successfully. Now all we need to do is add the connection string back to my application and replace the one that's there already. So let's go ahead and disable my existing database. We'll go ahead and stop the SQL Server. That SQL Server is now stopped. I can test that by rerunning my application and the connection should fail because there's no database online. Here in Visual Studio, once again, I'll run this application and I expect to see a failure in the application because the database is unavailable. Always a problem with a shared database in general, especially when you take it offline. Sure enough, web application fails. It's simply not able to run because it cannot connect it to the SQL Server database. So now let's grab a connection string from the Windows Azure SQL database and update the one in this application. From here, when I'm looking at the view for my particular database, you can see dashboards and monitors. I can also grab connection strings, which it makes very handy for every platform. So here's ADO.NET, which I would be using for my code, but you can also do this with PHP and JDBC. So I can take this entire value, 
and I'll be putting this into my application code. And I'll switch to Visual Studio and change this connection string to no longer be pointing locally, but instead be the value given to me by Windows Azure. As you can see, this is the whole value. Here's the username, my database, which is cloud, my server, which is in the cloud as well. The only thing I have to add is my actual password. The only other change I'll make before we go ahead and run this is the connection string that we got from the Windows Azure portal puts brackets around the database name. Funny enough, this didn't actually run for me. I had to get rid of the brackets. So in this case, I'm gonna get rid of the brackets, save my configuration file, and press F5 to run this, where it should connect to the Windows Azure SQL database and have the single record in there that we added to it. Sure enough, the website connects, and within a matter of seconds, we're able to pull up the single record that's actually stored in my Windows Azure SQL database. So this is now the existing on-premises app. All I had to do was switch a connection string, and now I'm utilizing a database in the cloud.